Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I want to share with you all my thoughts on the abilities we know about so far for the Machinist, the final of the three new jobs that is going to be coming out in Final Fantasy XIV's first expansion, Heaven's Word. Now, there's going to be a little bit of confusion when it comes to the Machinist because we are missing the names for a lot of abilities, but I'll try and convey what they're capable of to the best of my ability. Because of that, we should probably get started right away. So just like in my Dark Knight video, we're going to start with the cross-class abilities that are going to be available for Machinist. I'd like to stress also that the new jobs do not give abilities to any of the old jobs. They are strictly jobs, and jobs don't affiliate with the cross-class system. They just kind of take from it. So the cross-class abilities that the Machinist is going to be getting are Archer and Lancer. Now, Lancer I'm not surprised about. Invigorate's pretty much a go-to thing for everyone. Uh, but that means that it's going to be pretty much Invigorate, Blood for Blood, Raging Strikes, Hawk's Eye, and then you can choose do you need Quelling Strikes because you're pulling enemy too much? Do you need Keen Flurry for the extra parry? There's actually been quite a few mechanics in the final coil where Keen Flurry was actually very helpful. But uh, Invigorate, Blood for Blood, Raging Strikes, and Hawk's Eye probably all going to be mandatory. Uh, so you better get working on those if you don't already have them, especially Invigorate and Blood for blood so the machinist has three major themes that we're going to have to cover we're going to have to talk about attachments we're going to have to talk about turrets and we're going to have to talk about the ammunition system don't worry you're not going to have to go to the market board and buy all the ammunition just wait till that section and you'll be able to hear about exactly how it's going to work so the first thing to talk about is the attachment system. It's probably the simplest thing to explain, where you're able to put attachments onto your gun to alter the effects of your abilities. Uh, doing this is instant, and uh, it does have a variance of effects. The one that is spoken about the most in our notes is the Goss Barrel, which is basically the equivalent of Wanderer's Minuet, where it boosts your outgoing damage, but your effects, your attacks, I mean, have to be charged, and it removes your ability to do auto attacks. So it seems that they want both Machinist and Bard to be able to be mobile, but also to be able to stop and deal this damage when in a fixed position. Yoshi P has expressed he doesn't expect this to be a permanent change. The damage increase is just enough so that when you have these periods of time to stand still, that it will be efficient as long as you're using your global cooldowns every time they're available. But as soon as movement is required, you should be using that instead. So the Goss Barrel is going to be something along the lines of Wanderer's Minuet. These attachments, also because they're adding effects onto your other abilities or changing the way that your job is played, will increase TP costs, so expect to have to manage them a little bit more carefully. And that's really going to be a big thing here with the Machinist, is planning ahead and managing everything efficiently. If you love resource management, man did you just pick the right job to play, because this job has a lot of little things that you need to maintain between cooldowns that are shared, turrets, attachments, all this fun stuff. But the attachments, they seem pretty simple, very akin to a lot of the abilities other jobs have, such as, you know, the kisses of the ninja. I know that's what I keep comparing it to, you know, cleric stance, no cleric stance, diurnal sec, nocturnal sec. Just a lot of different opportunities in combat to switch if you need to maintain a different playstyle or use certain other effects on abilities. So, nothing too fancy. Almost every DPS job has some sort of stance like this. Let's move on to the turrets. So there is conflicting information with the turrets, so I'm just going to read what I've got from the Famitsu interview. Uh, so, first of all, turrets are not like your standard pets. They aren't, uh, they don't give you like a pet HP bar and you don't need to be micromanaged or anything like that. You simply place them on the field and they do damage. Apparently, the way that they're currently designed, it seems like they can't even be targeted and die. They don't even have a health bar. So they're literally just placed on the field and they do whatever their effect is. So don't worry about needing to micromanage a pet on top of all this other stuff. I know a lot of people have been asking me, do you think it'll work like that? It seems that that is not going to be the case. They're just completely immune to damage. And placing your turrets is on a relatively short cooldown. However, you can only have a single turret out at a time. So you need to make sure that you are placing the right turret for the right situation. So your most basic turret as a machinist is your auto turret Rook, and this is a single target Gatling gun type turret where it'll basically lock onto your current target. It'll assist you on attacking your current target and will just deal additional damage. There's nothing fancy about that at all. It just does what it does. So we don't need to talk about that anymore. The big turret, and that's, this is your other turret, is your AoE turret because Originally, we had thought a lot of different things. This is where conflicting information really comes in uh, between the Famitsu interview and pretty much all the other interviews where it's not made exactly clear the way this is going to work. So your other turret is called your Auto Turret Bishop. And this is just, when you place it down, it does AoE damage, lightning, whatever. It just pulses lightning damage in an AoE. 
However, you have another ability that allows you to modify the bishop turret to do other things. For example, it could be modified to regen your party's MP or TP akin to that of Ballad and Paeon, the other ranged DPS's ability. The difference is that this is in a fixed position. It is not a moving mana or TP battery like a bard would be. So uh, it needs to be placed in an intelligent position where it can be utilized when it needs to be. Uh, now keep in mind when you modify it to either regenerate MP or TP, it does lose its ability to attack, but it doesn't seem to be like a big DPS loss like I guess Payon or Ballad would be. To trade off for that, considering you're just losing the little bit of AoE damage the Bishop was doing, uh, these regens, the MP and TP ones, are weaker than the Bard. So when you need severe amounts of MP and TP, the Bard would probably still be the better option, especially with Battle Voice. But it seems that if you're just kind of hurting a little bit, you can switch your turret and it doesn't seem like you need to determine what you want to do with this turret before you place it. There's an unnamed skill that allows you to, on a very short cooldown, cycle through the different effects. So you can actually constantly just change the bishop while it's on the field, depending on what you need it for. It's definitely very flexible, and I can see why it doesn't uh, regenerate as much as Ballad or pay on especially considering it definitely doesn't seem to have as many drawbacks depending on how much of your dps comes from the auto turrets but uh it's cool a uh, placed a uh, placed mp or tp field and by the way if you ever want to reposition these uh, these uh turrets they are stationary after you place them you cannot command them to move so in, the, in order to successfully move either a rook or a bishop you need to use turret recovery and replace it on the field so uh make sure that when you're placing these they're in very intelligent positions because otherwise you may find yourself needing to remove them and replace them very very often it's definitely going to require a little bit of fight awareness positional awareness but once you've got it down you should know exactly when you're going to be using the rook or when you need to recover the rook and retrieve it for a bishop for mp or tp regeneration it's nice to have these all these little options as a machinist without really feeling like a super big support as a sense it's just there for when you really really need it and then you have all of the other abilities for the machinist. This part is going to be a little bit hard of the video because we're missing names for a lot of these skills. So at some point, you're basically just going to see me naming off a bunch of skills or saying the effects of a bunch of different skills with no names to really tie any of it to. But first, let's talk about the ammunition system because this is something that we, we at least have a little bit of definitive information about. So don't worry, like I said, you're not going to need to go to the market boards and purchase ammunition. It's more akin to like Etherflow where you load up your gun with five bullets so you'll have five stacks of ammunition and you'll be able to use those on various abilities. You have two skills to do this. You have the reload ability, which sits on, from what I've heard, about a minute cooldown and gives you five stacks of the ammunition buff. And then you have the quick reload option, which just gives you one quick stack of ammunition. And I've heard reports, I think from the Famitsu interview, that says that quick reload also uh, adds TP regen to your character. So it seems like they're really giving a lot of the melees a lot of different ways to generate TP because we know that uh, Monk is going to have one. Dragoon, actually, we don't know for certain. Maybe they just won't need it as much with Blood of the Dragon. But it seems like they're really helping, trying to help with resource management a little bit more in this expansion. But, uh... Let's just uh, let's just talk about that in another video, really. And then you you can use these ammunition stacks to again enhance abilities, make them hit harder, or increase proc rates. And increasing proc rates is the only real important one we know about so far because we don't know really where you use too many other pieces of ammunition. Uh, so. The big thing that you're going to be doing with your ammunition is your weapon skill combo. And think of this akin to the Bard's AoE, uh, the AoE proc, where they start with the first one, they have a chance to proc the second one, they do the second one, they have a chance to proc the third one. That's kind of how this is going to work, but it's going to be on their single target rotation. You have three abilities, Split Shot, Slug Shot, and Clean Shot. You, when you use Split Shot, you have a 50% chance to proc Slug Shot. When you use Slug Shot, you have a 50% chance to proc Clean Shot. However, if you use Ammunition, you can force procs to the next level. So you can use a piece of Ammunition to go straight from Split Shot to Slug Shot guaranteed. And then you can use Ammunition again to give Slug Shot a 100% chance to proc Clean Shot. And that's probably going to be the majority of the way that you use your Ammunition, is guaranteeing getting to the end of this combo. I just because I don't see too many other abilities that claim that they're absolutely using ammunition. I see one other one on this list. I'm sure there are more abilities than just split 
slug and clean shot that are going to use them but these are probably going to be the most important aspects upon mastering your ammunition usage it may only have a one minute cooldown you may get five stacks but you're probably going to go through them real quick if you immediately go and use them on slug shot uh, on uh you know procking slug shot and clean shot so with that out of the way, we got to talk about the other, like, 15 abilities. So let's get into those, because that was pretty simple to explain. The rest of them are just a slew of effects that they're going to have. So now we're probably going to just have a speed round of abilities, because there's just so many different abilities that we only have slight details on for the Machinist. But it's, it's strange to see so many different ability effects within the Machinist kit. Let's just try and name them as best as possible, because so many of them are missing names. Let's just try and get through it as best as possible. So the first skill is an unnamed one. It just says it does high damage and can only be used while in the Goss Barrel. I've seen people reporting that they might think this is actually the Wildfire ability, which is an ability that you can charge up and attack once. So you're going to need to sit still and charge it and then do a super attack. The main reason people think that the unnamed skill and Wildfire might be the same is because of Goss Barrel's effect of adding a charge time to your abilities as it is. So it's possible, but I'm not going to say that that's guaranteed. You also have the spread shot, which is a cone-shaped AoE that you're going to be able to do. You have an unnamed skill that allows you to attach a time bomb to an enemy that'll do heavy damage when it explodes. You have another unnamed skill that allows you to throw a grenade at the opponent. You have an unnamed buff that's going to guarantee your next hit will be a critical hit. You have another unnamed skill that's going to increase your damage dealt. Another unnamed skill that's going to reduce your recast timers. And I'm assuming some of these abilities got to use ammunition for some reason. I'd imagine guaranteeing your next hit's going to be critical would be pretty important for your ammunition usage. And we also know that some of these abilities require three ammunition and some of them only require one. So I don't know. You're going to have five stacks. You're going to have to figure out what to do amongst all these abilities with it. If these are even abilities that are affected by the ammunition. You have another skill that's a dot. I think that's standard. Almost every job in the game has a dot. I'm amazed we got this far without talking about any damage over time skills. Other than, of course, the turrets, which kind of act as a damage over time skill. And then you have a bunch of debuffing skills. You have suppressive fire, which acts as a stun. You have weapon break, which will reduce the target's physical damage done. So think of it like, uh, think of it like, I guess, virus, how it reduces strength, int, uh, all that stuff. Except that one of these, you have weapon break, strictly reduces the physical damage that the opponent is going to do. And then you have mind shot, which will reduce their magic damage. You also have grazing shot, which will inflict a slow. And this says, this actually confirms this ability cost one ammunition. So I'm assuming assuming all of these abilities cost ammunition but this is the only shot the slow the grazing shot that says uh that it costs one ammunition and then they have a various amount of other effects they have a heavy effect a bind effect a knockback effect a silence effect they have everything however there is one catch a lot of these debuffing skills share a recast timer, similar to that of Trick Attack and Sneak Attack. I'd imagine something like Weapon Break and Mind Shot share it so that way you can't just debuff both the physical and the magic damage that the opponent deals. Uh, the, maybe the, the heavy and the slow and the bind and the knockback and the silence, you have to choose one and it sits on a very long cooldown. So it's going to really be about situational awareness because you don't want to waste these and then need one of them 30 seconds later akin to how you wouldn't want to accidentally use your blunt arrow and then need to silence 10 seconds later uh it's just going to be a matter of you can literally do everything and anything as a machinist if there is any sort of mechanic that requires any sort of cc as a machinist you're good and that keeps very true to the final fantasy tactics way that machinist was handled and i'm impressed that they've managed to actually get that right uh, to me Having all these effects is like, what else? Like, it seems like they're going to have a very simple ability rotation and means of dealing damage. But there's going to have a lot of other management. They're going to be managing their debuffs. They're going to be managing their personal buffs. They're going to be managing their turret and its location. Do I need TP uh, regeneration, MP regeneration? Where do I use my ammunition? There's a lot to think about with the Machinist. But with all of these abilities and multiple of them sharing recast timers... You can't think that there's a ridiculous amount of complexity to your basic damage rotation. It's just that you are capable of so many different things as a machinist. Whew, that was crazy to have to name all those abilities off like that. So, in the end, they're very similar to Bard in some ways. They have the Wanderer's Minuet effect in that of their Goss, their goss Barrel. They have their, free mo they have their free movement generally, you know, just like Bard has now. Um, they have their cross-class skills, which are really, really good, by the way. And uh, 
yeah, it's just, there's a lot of really cool stuff. I wonder what their limit break is going to look like, because there is, uh, is it going to be a shot? Are they going to throw a grenade? Are they going to summon a giant ether cannon or something like that? That's the only thing left that I really want to know about. But I'm, I'm happy with the information here. I'm happy with how true it is to the Final Fantasy Tactics version of the Machinist. Let me know what you think in the comment section of the video below. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share for all the latest Heaven's Word information. Only two weeks away. Two weeks! Almost there. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, take care.